Peter Harrop, I'm chairman of ID TechX, and although my people know all about this subject, I don't. So I'm here to learn about this subject from the Bebop people as okay. to what exactly they do. So, uh, all right. Tosh, if you could tell me, please, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Toshi, uh, VP of Operations for uh, Bebop Sensors. We're a startup located in Berkeley, and we're doing pressure-sensitive fabric sensors. So, uh, as you can see here, we've got um, we've got an insole sensor here, and uh, if you uh, you look closely, you can see there's a multi-layered stack up of uh, inks. We're uh, working with Dupont on these uh, these inks, and you'll see there um, in their booth they've got a sample of this same. Uh, same sensor. Uh, we're printing directly on the fabric, uh, which is sort of unique. Um, it allows us to put the sensor in all sorts of different areas that um, having a, a board engaged with uh, a uh, conductive fabric wouldn't allow for. Uh, as you can see, we're also uh, embedding the microcontroller right into the sensor. So what we've got here really, and if you take a look at this, um, is really a half a millimeter thick piece of fabric um, and we add a microcontroller to that and uh, you've got a very thin, very flexible sensor. So, so is that silver you're printing, is it? That's correct. And, and what's it for? Why would I mean? I don't think I'd want to go through airport security with that. But uh, oh, what's it okay. for? What's it yeah. for? Yeah. So uh, there are a couple of applications that we uh, have talked to companies about. Some of those are for gait analysis, uh, which can be for a number of things. They can be for athletes. They could be for um, folks who are doing rehab with lower oh, body injuries right. yes, to make sure that yes. there's not a, uh, a huge um, you know, amount of strain on, on say, the, the, the side of the, uh, the body that uh, has been impacted by injury. Um, so this is a disposable product, is it, for a given investigation? Uh, certainly could be, but the, uh, the idea is that um, these would be uh, integrated with uh, other articles of clothing or apparel for permanent use as well. Uh, but we can make them for disposable applications, uh, but this is not necessarily one of them. Okay, okay, good. And it's environmental, is it? I mean, there's no toxic materials involved in that? Oh, no, no. We've, mm. we, we've, uh, we've done quite a bit of uh, material analysis. Uh, we, we've run it through the wash and sent it to... Now, could you give us your vision for the future of your company? What sector do you think is, if you, were, if you, were, if I allowed you to sell only in one sector, medical, automotive, aerospace, what would you choose, and where are you going to really um, mesh gears? Where are you, where in future is your enabling technology going to take you? Well, that's a, uh, ooh, that's a tough question. I don't think we'd want to limit it to one single vertical, but uh, you know, of course, uh, the automotive industry is uh, is a big deal for us because. Uh, it, oh really? It allows us to, yeah, of course. Uh, this is this is great for uh, safety mechanisms such as um, uh, occupant monitoring or let's just say um, some targeted deployment of uh, safety devices like an airbag or something like that. Um, it'll tell you if there's somebody sitting in there who's uh, you know, 100 pounds and five feet tall or. Uh, 300 pounds and uh, six and a half feet tall. So, uh, so that can be embedded in electronics. It could be really um, secure. That's correct. Long reliable, long life. All those sort of things. So That's correct. But I think that towards uh, getting rid of dumb materials and making them smart. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's an accurate description. Um, but again, I think that um, the reason I say that is because the the, the automotive industry has a uh, sort of a you know, very rigid standards for uh, what it is that they require, but they're also highly interactive with users. Um, but even if we're putting things inside of an automobile. The application goes beyond just uh, just in the auto industry. We could be putting sensors in seats that are in automobiles, or they could be in aircrafts, or they could be in your living room, for instance. Right, uh, and so you're again, using silver, but uh, there's uh, we have many a number of exhibitors that 
um, show how they can print copper, which is a fraction of the cost and has some advantages in having no sideways creep and so on. Is, is copper printing of interest or not? Uh, well, I can't say. I would say that that's probably, uh, that's just not a direction that we're looking yeah. at right now. Uh, it doesn't mean that it won't be in the future. Um, so, uh, again, probably not. Uh, Probably not something that. Uh, okay. And you're, be a, you're a wide area sensor business in a sense. Are you interested in other forms of sensor where you deposit for misters or something? Or that's not really our. Uh, no. That's not really in our our wheelhouse. Uh, no, we're okay. we're much more interested in um, uh, putting sensors uh, into devices that people are interacting with, with or other things are interacting with. Those things. Um, of course, this is a consumer product. It's not. Um, it's not exactly what uh, Bebop is focused on, but we are focused on being inside of consumer products. We're not actually building the products. Um, this is from our sister company, and they're doing. Uh, they're deploying. Yeah, they're deploying the fabric in a in a slightly different way than Bebop is doing. Um, you can see here that uh, you look at the silicone mold here. You can see the fabric that. Uh, actually being deployed um, in a slightly different way, but the effect is still the same. Uh, you've got uh, touch-sensitive buttons here. You can see the force magnitude in the yellow, or excuse me, the red circle there. Uh, and then if I press harder, you can see if you look at the visualizer, this is all different magnitudes of force. Again, for controller devices, um, you know, it's great because a lot of times uh, it's just on-off. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Here we've yeah. got, I guess in the musical industry they call this velocity, uh, sort of a three-dimensional uh, input which has uh, any number of programmable outputs. So let's be clear again about the names of the two companies so we can distinguish them. There's Absolutely. Bebop Sensors and what? So Keith McMillan Instruments is uh, was founded by Keith McMillan. He's the founder and CEO uh, of both companies. He was getting he was getting a lot of inbound inquiries on uh, you know, from robotics companies, medical, um, uh, automotive, uh, and. Uh, he decided that the, the amount of inquiries was going to be enough to sort of support a business to stand on its own to supply OEMs. Uh, so about a year ago, he spun out Bebop sensors from Keith McMillan Instruments. And uh, Bebop is uh, owed to the musical origins of the company. Thank you very much. An impressive two companies. Thank you for your time.